Warning. Censorship. Warning. Censorship. Warning. Censorship. I'm not sure if you know this, but Rebel News is putting together an advisory board. Our longtime friend Raheel Raza is the chair of it. Barbara Santamaria, one of our most loyal supporters, is on it too. And the latest member is Larry Solomon, a columnist and philanthropist. Here's how we describe our board on our website. The Rebel News Advisory Board supports the editorial and the strategic decision-making of the Rebel News team. Board members come from a variety of backgrounds and provide guidance and constructive criticism to Rebel News management and staff. The advisory board meets formally four times a year and gives informal advice to Rebel News on a continuous basis. So I'm glad to have these great allies, and we're going to add a few more. Anyways, I want to show you what Larry published in the Epic Times. I think it's not only well-written, but it has real news in it, some of which I knew from before, but some of which I didn't. So I'm going to take you through it. I did a bit of this on my noontime live stream earlier today, but I'd like to go through it a bit deeper now. By the way, you can read the Epoch Times online for free. You just have to register with your email. I'd also encourage you to become a paying subscriber to that print edition, which I am. It's the only print newspaper I take, actually. It's a weekly newspaper in Canada, and it is so well done. It's a great newspaper. Uh, we love the Epoch Times. You'll remember we did a show about it as recently as last night, and we've defended them because they are being deplatformed just the same way, way we are, so we stand up for them. Anyways, I read Larry's column in the Epoch Times, and it's great, and even better, it's full of links to his underlying sources of facts, which is more than you get in most media, am I right? Can I take you through his column? I have some pride in it, because Larry is our advisor, but obviously the work is all his. So here's the article on the website. The biggest COVID-19 vaccine skeptics? Frontline healthcare workers. What do frontline healthcare workers and first responders know about COVID-19 vaccines that politicians and their public health advisors don't? Huh. Let me take you through it a bit. According to a January analysis by Gallup, 51% of healthcare workers and first responders polled in December were unconvinced of the merits of getting vaccinated even if the vaccine was free, available, FDA approved, and 90% effective, unquote. Gallup found these results especially concerning since those at highest risk of exposure to COVID-19, the professionals required to meet America's health, safety, and critical economic needs, whom the National Academies of Engineering, Science, and Medicine define as Tier 1A workers, were the likeliest to refuse vaccination, 34%. And like I say, Larry links to the proof. So if you click on that link, you get the Gallup website itself. Here's their story. Frontline workers no keener than others to get vaccine. Isn't that interesting? I, I should have thought it was. In some places, the number of frontline workers who won't get the jab is 50%. The frontline workers prove to be as defiant uh, as Gallup's survey um, of their intentions anticipated. I'm just reading here. In California, over half of Tahama County's hospital workers at St. Elizabeth Community Hospital, an estimated 50% of frontline workers in Riverside County and 20% to 40% in L.A. County refused the vaccine, according to a report in the L.A. Times. And again, Larry's got the links. Here's the link that you click for the story in the L.A. Times. Some healthcare workers refused to take COVID-19 vaccine even with priority access. Let me read a little bit from the underlying story. They are frontline workers with top priority access to the COVID-19 vaccine, but they are refusing to take it. At St. Elizabeth Community Hospital in Tehama County, fewer than half of the 700 hospital workers eligible for the vaccine were willing to take the shot when it was first offered. At Providence Holy Cross Medical Center in Mission Hills, one in five frontline nurses and doctors have declined the shot. Roughly 20% to 40% of LA County's frontline workers who were offered the vaccine did the same, according to county public health officials. So many frontline workers in Riverside County have refused the vaccine, an estimated 50% that hospital and public officials met to strategize how best to distribute the unused doses, Public Health Director Kim Saruwatari said. So what does it say about a pandemic when you can't even give away the vaccine? 
even to people who are the most educated about healthcare, I think, and who would theoretically be at the highest risk of getting infected, I think, it suggests to me that they simply don't believe the hype. And they're as close to health experts as anyone is. And in fact, if you're a nurse or a doctor who actually deals with actual COVID cases every day, you probably know more about the reality of the virus than some bureaucrat or politician, which is what a public health officer like Theresa Tam is. Larry gives a bunch more examples. It's very widespread. Uh, here's one. In Georgia, according to an estimate in the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, only 30% of healthcare workers have been inoculated. In Ohio, Governor, Governor Mike DeWine reported that 60% of nursing home workers refused the vaccine. In Texas, the Texas Tribune reported in February that home health and assisted living agencies may not be able to service their clients because so many caregivers are refusing to be vaccinated. A CDC survey of skilled nursing facilities published in early February found that fewer than 40% of staff took at least one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. Those are all linked, those sources. Here's one just for proof. This is uh, uh, a newspaper uh, in Columbus. DeWine says 60% of nursing home workers not elected to get the vaccine. Now you could say, that's a scandal, force them, right? I mean, those nursing homes, those seniors' homes, they're the most dangerous places. And I think they are for people who are over 80, who have two, three, four underlying serious medical conditions. Yeah, I think that's what the stats show. But what about for young, healthy staff? It's not dangerous at all, really. And if you say that nursing staff should get the jab to protect their patients, I hear you. That seems to make common sense to me. But public health experts don't actually agree with that because they say you can still carry the virus even if you yourself are inoculated against it. So, so what's the point? That's an excerpt from my daily show, The Ezra Levant Show. Every day I do a monologue on the news of the day, then I interview an interesting guest, and then I read my hate mail. You gotta subscribe. Go to rebelnews.com.